So far, we've seen how to work with single values, like the number 12.3 or the string high. And that's great, but most of the time in the real world, our data is a lot more complicated. It consists of pieces like numbers and strings and booleans, but usually we have more than one piece of information and they're often related to one another. So this is where data structures come in, which is what we're talking about here. We're seeing our first two data structures in this section, the array and the object. They're both built into JavaScript and they're both used all over the place. You would be hard pressed to find any code base that did not contain both of them. They're really, really useful. First, a couple of goals. We wanna be able to write arrays, understand the syntax, do the same thing with object literals. Also, we'll take a quick detour to talk about reference types and revisit our friend const. We saw let, let in const briefly. We'll talk about it again in this section. And then we'll talk about a ton of built-in array and object methods. Remember how string had all these different methods like string.index of, string.toUppercase. Arrays and objects have their own set of methods as well. In this video, we're gonna start with arrays, which are collections of values all of these different values we've seen so far, strings, numbers, booleans, things like null and undefined, arrays collect them into one structure, one collection, and it's ordered. So I like to visually think of it as one of these pill containers where you have little slots and you can put data, or in our case, pills, into these slots and there's an order. Usually it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and so on. And you start with this first one and then the second one and you can see what are, where I'm going with this, arrays are very similar. They are slots, and on their own, arrays don't do much unless we put information in them. So they collect all those primitive types of data we've seen so far. They also can collect other data, like other arrays, which we'll get to in a bit. So let's take a look at two quick examples of where an array is used. Here is a playlist on Spotify. Uh, there's a very special, special, there's a particular order to these songs. People spend a lot of time ordering playlists. Usually they're not just a random collection of songs, although people do shuffle them, which undo, which undoes the order, but the order is set. You can change it depending on the application, but the main point is that there's an order. So there's something first, second, third, and so on, all the way down to the bottom. We could use an array, and there is an array behind the scenes for Spotify that is used to store playlist information. Another example would be comments on a blog post or on Reddit. Those comments have a particular order. On Reddit, there it depends on how you're sorting, but it could be by upvotes, it could be by time, most recent comments. I'm on Medium here. There are seven comments, I think. And as you can see, there's an order. If I refresh the page, we'll get that same order again. Now each comment consists of multiple pieces of information, which is where objects will come in. So we're gonna get there. For now, we'll be creating arrays that consist of single values in each slot in that array. Something like this comment consists of multiple values, a username, a date, the comment text, the number of applause or claps or whatever they're called on Medium. There's multiple pieces of information bundled into one comment. But for now, we'll start with simpler things. So to make an array, there's a really, really easy way of doing it. We just use these square brackets. We've seen them before in the context of strings. They mean something different if we're not accessing a string. So we've seen this, LOL, if I can type a string, LOL square brackets one or two or zero. When we make an array, we use the same brackets, but in a different context where there's no string in front, it will make us an empty container, an empty pillbox. This is now ready to store our information we can also initialize an array with data already in it. So we can store whatever we want. All of the types we've seen so far are welcome in any array. So we can put strings or numbers or booleans, we can even mix them all up together. So here's an example of a simple array. Let's go with let, how about shopping list equals, and then we'll put in some things that we need. We have ice, we have, let's go with cheese, and usually, I think ice actually makes sense at the end. Remember, these are ordered. We'll put ice in there. And I'm gonna put that at the end because when I go to the grocery store, I like to get frozen stuff at the end so it doesn't melt. Uh, we'll also put maybe cereal and then cheese. Okay, so this is going to make us an array with three items in it. 
if I save my code, I'm just working in another app.js connected to my index. I've opened it up over here. I'll refresh. I don't see anything because I'm not console.logging, but I can access shopping list. And we can see it contains three items. Length is three. We'll talk about that in a moment. So there's our first example of an array. We also could make an empty array. If we didn't have information to put in it at the beginning, we could go and add information later on, which we'll see how to do. We could make an array of numbers, like lotto numbers. And I don't really know what the rules are for lotto numbers, if they're supposed to be less than 60 or 100 or whatever it is. But here's an example of that. We have five numbers in an array. There's an order. And we can also combine information. So this will be relatively meaningless. Usually your data is relatively cohesive when you have it inside of a, an array, but it doesn't have to be. We could have a string like dog, a number 12, true, null, could even put not a number in there. Perfectly valid. In some programming languages, this would not be good. Some of them don't want you to mix up data in an array. You have to specify this is a collection of only strings and you're only allowed to put strings in there. But that's not the case with JavaScript. We can put whatever we want. And if I look at, oh, I do need to refresh the page so that it loads. If I look at my collection, we can see it's an array with five items in it. All right, so that's the basics of making an array. There is one other way to make one. If you don't use this square bracket syntax, which is also called array literal syntax, you can do this. You won't see it. At least I don't see it very often. And it, it, the reason is that it's a lot longer. But new array will make you an empty array, just like empty array does with the square brackets. And you could pass in values. If I wanted numbers in that array, it gives me a new array with one, two, three, four, five. But why do that if you could just instead do one, two, three, four, five? So that's creating arrays. Next, we'll talk about accessing information out of arrays.